Hello and welcome to this Q&A video. I asked on Instagram if you guys had questions and you did. So I'm going to do this Q&A in two parts. The first part um, I will do today and I will talk about things regarding China and things regarding my identity and then ending with some opinion or advice questions. And then the next Q&A I will do will have questions about like what the first meeting was like and then more questions about my current life and things I am thinking about. So one question I got all the time is, how is my Chinese language study coming? And to be honest, guys, it's not great. So before I actually met my Chinese parents, I had taken one year of Chinese at university. So I understood what I didn't know and I knew some basics, but I was so scared to speak. <laughs> as you can tell in the video, and of course it was one year so I didn't understand most of what was being said. And that's the only formal language study I've had since. Um, I've been doing a lot of like self-study, but it's really hard and I haven't been very intentional with it. So someday I want to be able to invest a lot of time and energy into learning Chinese, but I just haven't been able to find that. So if you guys have any tips or advice, please tell me. Ah, because languages are hard. What was moving to China like? So if you don't know, um, last school year I taught English in China. I was primarily a high school teacher, but I also taught some kindergarten and first graders as well. So um, mm, moving to China was interesting. So it's really hard for me to feel connected there. Um, I liked it because I learned a lot about China and Chinese culture and a lot of new experiences that I wouldn't have had otherwise. But also the job wasn't exactly what I thought it was going to be. So yeah, it was difficult but I'm glad I could go to China and I don't know if I would move there again. And if I did move there again, I would probably move to some place like Shanghai or yeah some place where I just have more options I don't know but it was a good experience overall but a difficult one for me so next was there any culture shock that you experienced when you first met your biological parents not really because before I met my biological parents I actually um, was living in China for one month. I taught at a kindergarten. So the month before I met my Chinese parents, I was living with a host family and that was my first time in China since my adoption. So I did have culture shock on that first trip to China, but I kind of um, dealt with it when I was with the host family. So yeah, but also culture shock doesn't really phase me. I, I, I've traveled enough that I know what to expect with culture shock and that kind of gets to the next part of the question which is how do I cope with culture shock? You just gotta learn and you just have to realize you're going to be ignorant and you have to just learn and be open-minded and it's not always easy so you also just need to know your boundaries and know how to take care of yourself so that would be my advice and Lastly, are there any challenges getting to know your Chinese family or living with them? Yes. Um, getting to know them is nearly impossible because of the language barrier. We've had translators, but I don't think we, tran we use them well. Like, it's really hard for us to communicate on a deep level with a translator. And living with them, I also feel a little bit of pressure to... I don't know, like, be their, like, perfect daughter, which I don't even know what it is. So... I'm really careful when I'm around there and there are cultural differences like I feel like I'm a very independent person but you know they see me as their daughter and like this little girl who they want to take care of which is their way of showing love but it's very different than how I see myself 
So, um, things like that make it hard to live with them for long periods of time. They're loving me in their own way, which I appreciate, but we aren't really able to get to know each other uh, because of culture and because of language. So it's hard, but I do enjoy a challenge and I like learning more about them. So hopefully as time goes on, we'll find ways to connect with each other in other ways. Okay, so now on to questions of identity, which is so complicated, but um, a lot of you had questions. So the first one is, did your adopted parents ever talk about race? And did you learn about Chinese culture growing up? No, we never talked about race in my household. Um, basically because most people were from the same race. And if they weren't, most people were adopted like me. So they were like, I don't know, whitewashed, you could say. Um, so I didn't really realize how important race would be in my life until I got out of my community and people started really seeing me as Asian and and then I'm just like, oh, there's like this whole conversation and there's so much history and <sighs> America and race, guys, it's so complicated. So, but I think it's a really important conversation to have. And then next, okay, yeah, did I learn Chinese culture? Not really. So when I was Growing up, we used to go to these events in the summer put on by the adoption agency. So it was like a shallow way of talking about culture, but it was still a way to learn a little bit about Chinese culture. But I don't really remember those, and we didn't do them for a long time. So I would say I didn't know anything about Chinese culture, like just the same as any like white or black kid probably knows in America. Um, okay, the next question is, how have you struggled with your identity in any capacity being adopted and raised in a transracial household? So there are a lot of things growing up that I just didn't notice. There were microaggressions that looking back I see were like actually really hurtful. But at the time, like I didn't even know that people were being mean or that those things are not okay to say. Like, I remember a lot of my friends growing up would be like, oh, you know, you don't even look that Chinese, or you don't even look that Asian. And they would tell me that, like, it was a compliment, which is so hurtful on so many levels, because A, it's it's saying that, like, oh, you know, looking white, you know, that's um, the goal, and that's what everyone should strive to be, and also just rejecting the part of me that is Asian. I didn't know how to talk about race, so... But now looking back... It was interesting childhood, that's for sure. And then the next question is, do you feel culturally Asian or white? Where do you feel more at home, USA or Asia? I feel more culturally Asian American. Um, but if you had asked me like five years ago, I would have said probably white. But I've come to realize what it means to be Asian American and people see me as Asian American when I go to Europe people don't see me as like a white American. They definitely see me as an Asian American. So I've had to adopt that label onto myself and it's helped me explore different parts of my identity and to be able to relate to other kinds of people. So yes, and I definitely feel more at home in the USA than Asia. Okay, so now I'm just gonna go to the last question, which is going to be an advice question. What would you want to share with other adoptees on acceptance? So, accepting yourself as an adoptee is so complicated. Thank you guys for watching and I will see you later. Bye.